Hello everyone, welcome to Split Second. My name is Cicada and I'll be taking you through today's match. Before starting, we at Split Second want to thank everyone for your constant support and suggestions on all social media. You can continue to support us by sharing and liking this video, subscribing if you haven't yet, or by becoming a patron. We'd also like to remind you guys to try and support your local game store by buying MTG products there. Help keep your store alive. Finally, while the current global situation continues, we will be providing everyone with high-quality digital gameplay rather than paper magic. This week, our guest and friend Bruno Castro will be playing for me. He is bringing his own version of Tassigur. Luis is playing his Eurico, David his Locust God and Bal is playing with his Food Chain First Liver. Time to check our starting hands. Even with me out, Luis is still starting the match, showing that Cockatrice really does love him. His hand is pretty okay. Stone Coil Serpent can be cast on turn 1 to enable a turn 2 Eurico. He has Underground Sea and Verdant Catacombs to make sure he can access both of his colors. Tetsuko Mezawa further enables his commander, while Flusterstorm is pretty decent interaction. With Jace, Wilder of Mysteries and Spellseeker, Luis can easily go for a demonic consultation line if he finds the mana to do so. David's hand is a bit slow, but he was forced to mulligan twice so he chose to keep it. He has a Bloodstained Mire and an Island for lands. He can ramp with Arcane Signet and Felwar Stone. Pungify is a good way to interact with problematic creatures, while Skull Clamp is excellent if David gets to play his Locust God. David sent Time Spiral to the bottom of his library. Bal's hand is pretty balanced. He can cast an early brainstorm and somewhat sculpt his hand thanks to the fetches, flood the strand and wooded foothills. While the Avimaya Coast helps him play Elves of Deep Shadow as well. He has a Dark Ritual to go for a more explosive turn and Abrupt Decay is an all-star that kills a lot of relevant permanents. Bruno's hand is mostly about interaction. Oko Thief of Crowns, Winds of Rebuke, Rapid Hybridization, all of these could help him slow the rest of the table down, regardless of him starting last. He has Soul Ring to enable a turn to Oko. Bayou and Wooded Foothills can cover his color base, and the fetch could hate him in an earlier Tassigur, which could eventually lead him to casting the Great Ange. Let's get this show going. Luis starts by playing Underground Sea, following it up with a spicy Stone Coil Serpent for one. This could easily mean a turn to Yuriko to start and annoy the rest of the table. He passes. David plays an island. He then plays a mana crypt to push himself ahead, tapping it for a Felwar stone. He then taps the stone for an arcane signet. Impressively enough, this makes it possible for him to go for a turn to Locust God. Bal's turn is more in line with how Luis started. He plays Yavimaya Coast and casts Elves of Deep Shadow. Then he passes. Not wanting to be upstage, Bruno plays a Bayou into a Sol Ring. Everyone had a relevant first round. Luis starts his second turn with the Verdant Catacombs, cracking it for a basic Swamp since David could be looking to drop a Blood Moon effect. He then attacks Bruno with a Stone Coil Serpent for one, since he is very likely to go deep with Pain Life to win. Luis does not play Yuriko, surprising the table. Instead, he goes to his second main phase and casts the Chains of Mephistopheles just so that everyone is forced to read the oracle text for the card rather than the original printing. He passes to David. David wins the Crypt Roll. He then plays the Bloodstained Mire and cracks it for a Volcanic Island. As expected, he gets a turn 2 Locust God, pretty much trying to assert board dominance. With that, he lets Baal get to his turn. Baal plays the Wooded Foothills and cracks it for a Basic Forest. He immediately casts an Extract, targeting himself and fully declaring the Food Chain intent in case anyone had missed it. He exiles an Eternal Scorch from his own library before passing. Bruno plays a Command Tower. He then casts Oko, Thief of Crowns, in pretty much one of the two only formats where he can still do his thing. He uses it to transform the Locust God into a 3-3 Elk, ruining a lot of David's plans for this game. Happy with his prank, he passes to Luis. On his turn, Luis attacks Oko with his Serpent for one. He knows how much the Elk Walker can get away with. Missing a land drop, Luis goes to his second main and casts a Tetsuko Umezawa, which could mean he might not have interaction for Baal's potential food chain. He then passes the turn. David rolls for the Crypt and the 50-50 catches up to him as he loses 3 life. He plays an island and then tries to take revenge on Oko with his 3-3 Elk Commander. However, the walker is still alive and ready for more shenanigans. David is stuck due to the chains of Mephistopheles, so he passes the turn. Perhaps intimidated by David's mana being prepared, 
Ball goes for the conservative play. And Marsh flats following by passing. He doesn't attack Oko so he can survive another attack from Rondon and maybe get Bruno to turn Yuriku into an elk. Going to his turn, Bruno plays a wooded foothills and cracks it for a tropical island. Oko creates a food token so that it can survive Tetsuko and the serpent. He exiles his foothills to help delve for his Tassigur which could help keep Oko around further. He then passes to Luis. Luis immediately jumps to combat. He attacks Oko with Tetsuko and Bruno with the serpent both of which are unblockable due to Tetsuko's passive ability. Before damage, he ninjutsus Yuriko for the Serpent to start getting some good card draw in. Yuriko triggers and Luis reveals a Thought Vessel. Everybody loses 2 life before he passes, once again having missed the land drop despite the extra draw. On his cleanup step, he discards the poor Thought Vessel. David loses 3 to the Crypt again. He then chooses to Pongify Tassigur. He knows that he can either take out Oko, which is super annoying, or probably get his commander back to the command zone if Bruno blocks. Both of these are good scenarios. David attacks the walker with his health commander and Bruno blocks with his ape token. Both die. David plays a soul guide lantern and exiles Luis's thought vessel from his graveyard. Moving to David's end of turn, Bal casts an abrupt decay on the chains and shows the table why by following that up with a brainstorm. After some minor sculpting, he cracks the marsh flats for a tapped watery grave getting rid of the previous top of his library. On his turn, Bao plays a Flooded Strand. He then attacks Oko with his elves to keep it under control. Finally, he passes. On his turn, Bruno plays an island. He uses the Oko to transform his own food token into a 3-3 elk. He then casts Assassin's Trophy on Luis's Yuriko since he is tapped and unable to protect his commander. This way, if Luis wants an extra draw, he'll have to pay for the ninjutsu cost and have less resources. Luis isn't too mad about getting an island for the trouble. Bruno passes. Now that it's his time to play, Luis draws and played an island. Mana at last. He then chooses to attack Bao over Bruno with Tetsuko and injustices Yuriko back again. Yuriko triggers and Luis reveals a spell stutter sprite. Everybody loses 2 life and Luis potentially has interaction in the turn cycle after this one. He discards to hand size and passes. David keeps a sweet 50-50 by not taking damage from the Crypt roll. He then casts an EZ Signet and a Dockside Extortionist creating a single treasure token. However, he wasn't really looking for a lot of mana, he has enough of that. What he wanted to do was ramp slightly to abuse the Skull Clamp he casted after the Dockside on his next turn. He equips it to the Extortionist. On David's end step, Bal cracks a Flooded Strand for a Tundra, leaving his Fetchland Fantasy. On his turn, Bal plays a gemstone cavern and follows it up with a demonic tutor he just drew. We all know what he's getting, a food chain. He casts it. In response, Bruno casts a rapid hybridization on Elves of Deep Shadow, effectively reducing the mana Bal can get from exiling the Elves to food chain by one. Bal tops the Elves to generate one black mana in response. Luis then attempts to mana drain the food chain and stop the nonsense. However, once again in response, Bal casts a Dark Ritual and then casts a Demonic Consultation naming Pact of Negation. It's all or nothing for Bal. Luckily, he manages not to lose the Pact with the Consultation's initial exiled cards. Thus, he finds the Pact of Negation. He casts it. In response, David cracks Soul Guild Lantern to try and draw an answer himself. He doesn't, so Bal's Pact resolves, and so does his Food Chain. He exiles the token to add black mana to cast Eternal Scorch and then has infinite mana to cast creature spells. He casts the first sliver enough times to cascade into a Jace Wilder of Mysteries and cast it. He goes back to looping, eventually cascading into a Tainted Pact. He wins with the Jace's activation, drawing from an empty library. Bal comes out on top of this game meticulously, but at least he didn't win thanks to Athasa's Oracle. Thanks for following us through this match everyone. Food Chain First Sliver has asserted its dominance this game. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Carneiro, Troy, Stefan, TJ Rapp, Mike Purr, Ajimo and Eagle Eagle our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Come with us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then.